welcome to, fr I almost said Thursday, it's Friday. It is Friday. We hope you had a good week. Even though the week sucked. And we're <laughs> sorry that we're, the world's at war. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Mom. We are sorry about that. Well, it is. But it's we have nothing to do with that. It's a downer time. It is a downer time, so we're trying to escape into not-so-downer times by laughing at the British royal family. Cheers. But it, 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 is, it is bad. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Um, cause we talk about it later too. Um, Diana's ex-husband is being investigated by the police, uh, this time for the same cash for honor scandal. His closest aide and the president of his foundation tried to resign, obviously trying to protect him, but apparently that didn't work. Um, it's unlike, I, I mean, I, I have no hope that the, any British investigative forces are going to actually investigate a senior member of the royal family, but. Unlikely. It's probably another occasion of a rich white man failing to be held accountable but that seems to be going around so <laughs> that's a dime a dozen yeah though. come yeah, on yeah just um, one could they just find one one dude one dude do one something. one white dude one do rich something. white dude and do something hmm. no they can't that's not how the world works I know. okay um, anyway, I just thought it was, in actually, I thought it was interesting that they announced that they were investigating investigating it at all. Um, they probably just want to kind of save some face after some uh, other failures in investigations, but interesting. I also right. firmly believe we should always refer to Charles as Diana's ex-husband. I think that's a good idea. Well, and mm -hmm. this is one where, you know, they could more palatably probably find some excuse to not find him. Yeah. Ha having done anything wrong. Although, Whereas, you know, failing to investigate Andrew is just because they have to be kind of like, you know, the little monkeys with their hands and eyes over their eyes and oh, yes. see no evil, hear no evil, um, little things. Because if they go down that path, really, I mean, how are they going to let him, how are they going to say he didn't do anything? He didn't know, Mom. Oh, yeah. He didn't know. I know. But, but this is like an easier one. This is a cleaner yeah. one that they can... Sweep under the rug. Yeah. Oh, we investigated. Yeah. 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 Um, there is a Prince Harry connection. Apparently, uh, Charles's team tried to kind of rope him mm -hmm. into this, and his his advisors were like, don't touch this with a thousand foot pole. So, interesting. Charles does not seem to be very paternal. I'm sorry, Diana's ex-husband does not mm -hmm. seem to be very, like, paternal. No. I mean, I, I, I don't think any of the... Royals. I mean, the the main in line ex of succession royals seem to be at all warm and fuzzy in any way. No, but he's like. I mean, he's thrown his kids under the bus in tabloids. Yeah. He's, yeah. you well, know, I I think like as we were talking about <laughs> rich white men, <laughs> there are also all apparently a bunch of narcissists who only care about themselves. Well, in, I, at, at least you know the ones that are frequently on the world stage that we hear about. Well, and in his case, the wealth was inherent, inherited. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I'm a pretty firm believer in, in you, you cannot get that wealthy without kind of having something wrong with you because you have to, you kind of have to do evil things to become an incredibly wealthy person, in my opinion. That's probably true. And I mean, or inherit it, which or is also a common, yeah. it's not just him. Um, okay, sorry, I'm trying to write down timestamps so I don't have to go back through and listen to the whole thing again, not that I don't God like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always joke, we always joke that this is going to be like a short thing and then it ends up being 45 minutes long and then it takes me three hours to edit. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Harry's uh, taking home office to court, basically saying he has the right to pay for armed security while in the UK. Um, this news came out on the back of Andrew's settlement, and uh, we had British press claiming that Andrew was being chivalrous towards his mother by taking her money and settling his uh, essay case after months of terrible press. Um, the next day claiming that Harry was being cruel to the Queen for wanting to pay for his own security. Yeah, that's so mean. It's so mean. It God, just never ends. How dare he? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it's so silly. I don't know if they even realize how silly it looks. I mean, it looks bad. It doesn't it, look silly. It looks bad. I'm just like, why aren't you letting him? Hey, he... Oh, well, the, I, I'm talking about the appearance of the coverage of it, not the oh. underlying. Yes. The underlying thing of 
them not letting him pay for his own security is not silly. That's ridiculously bad. But the coverage of, for example, saying Andrew is, you know, helping his mother out by taking her money so that he doesn't have to go to court over bad things that he did versus Harry somehow insulting the queen by, you know, wanting to come see her <laughs> at security <laughs> is, you know, that's silly. It's ridiculous. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's just, ob- objectively, it's absurd. Yes. And I, I, I guess they either don't realize that or don't care, probably the latter. Yes. <laughs> yes, I agree with everything you just said. Um, there was a little Rhoda on Rhoda action uh, where Omid Scobie tweeted that he was told by Kensington Palace at the time that Angela Levin, who's one of the worst, mm-hmm. she's one of those ones who will take a tweet from some random person and present it as news, um, basically spun a 15-minute interview into a book about Harry back in the 20-teens and has been basically shouting from the rooftops that they are friends <laughs> since. But it gives you a sense of kind of what this Rhoda pack is all about is she, she will go on the news and say that she's known Harry for years, they're best buddies, how could he have done this to her? Yeah. Uh, and apparently the only time they've ever spent together was a 15-minute interview. That was supposed to be for, like, a magazine, and she spun it into a book. Yeah. But they're besties. Well, I, I clearly don't follow this like you do, but I get the impression a lot of them think that they're, quote-unquote, friends with... Yes. ...with whoever they're covering, and that seems... Probably not true. <laughs> well, I, it it seems like they took this whole the whole Megan thing very like personally, mm. and I hate saying this because I it's not a cop out. I, I hate, but there did seem a lot of especially the female reporters seemed very kind of possessive of Harry, in like an uncomfortable mm. way. Like mm. we saw the same thing on Tumblr. Like it was it was I don't know. They seemed kind of jealous in in an icky way. Well, I would also suspect that if you have the basically the same group of reporters covering the same group of people all the time, you know, you become not friends, but assuming that the people you're covering aren't complete a-holes, yeah. they're probably friendly. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you develop some sort of rapport yes. and you talk to them and you see them and, you know, that might feel to some people like oh I'm friends with these people even though you're not yeah. and then maybe when that relationship is ruptured by you don't get to cover them anymore because they've left the country um, you know I, I suppose maybe people over who've overly personalized things yeah. take it personally well and Harry and Meghan didn't play the game mostly because already even when it first the minute it was announced they were dating she already she was hit with all that racist yeah. crap and um, I, I think Harry has always been less willing to play the game than other members of his family, yeah. but they didn't do the little press tour. Apparently, Kate was paraded around privately in front of the yeah. press, and they got to, like, quote, get to know her. And Harry and Meghan didn't do that, and they took it very personally. And multiple Rhoda have come out and said, oh, if only they had done that, we would have been nicer, which is abusive. Like, if, if, well, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's and it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just making excuses after the fact. Yes. Um, the Queen, Charles, and Camilla got COVID. I think we talked about Charles and Camilla last time, but the Queen has it. Uh, and I mean, sorry, the Queen, Diana's ex-husband and Camilla. Yeah. Um, the Queen has it. She's been canceling meetings. Apparently she has symptoms. And of course, if you're in the mid, if you're in your mid nineties, even a little COVID symptoms probably have you down and out. Well, yeah. The, what I don't get is every time they say she's canceling something, they say that she continues with light duties. Which I don't even, I, I mean, even know what that A, means. why do you feel, that? I guess they feel the need to say that because they don't want to say she's like bedridden or something. But also, you know, I mean, like lighter than showing up on a Zoom. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I. She's working, mom. <laughs> um, well, but I mean, yeah, clearly the light duties thing is some kind of. Uh, I think any kind of They think they have to say it. They think they have to say it. But I mean, what is she possibly doing if she's canceling these sort of minor engagement. Well, and then we go back to how the government and the royal family kind of use each other and it plays very well into Boris Johnson's version of COVID to say this 95-year-old woman has COVID but she's still going to work. Yeah. Which yeah. is bullshit. Yeah. She's not bagging groceries. She's not 
picking up heavy pallets. She's not right. having to, you know, she's sitting in her palace on Zoom, which apparently she can't do. So, right. <laughs> but it, it, it goes with their whole government mantra, too, of look at our 90-something-year-old queen. She's still at work, whatever the, that means. Which is just crazy. Yeah. 90-some-year-old. I mean, that's... Sometimes there's like work ethic gone awry. Like, uh -oh, why we can't, is, I know, we can't I know. Talk. Oh. But this is why is work good? It's like when that woman told um, George W. Bush that she had three jobs, and he was like, "Good for you!" Instead <laughs> of like, "Oh my God, yeah. it's so awful that yeah. someone should have to have three jobs to make ends meet." It's kind of that same thing. Like, it's not always a good thing that somebody is. Yes. Like allegedly working or working hard. At some point, a 96 year old deserves a break yes. and retirement. And or U.S. senators, please listen to this. <laughs> Thank you. Take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> go, to, go on vacation. Retire. Um, yeah, no, it's just. <sighs> <sighs> um, and of course, you know, anytime, basically, anytime the queen has to cancel events, everyone gets a little nervous. Um, which is kind of silly, to be totally honest with well, you. Yeah, but I'm sure that's part. I mean, part of it is just I'm sure the she continues to undertake light duties means we don't think she's going to die in an hour. Yeah, you know. Um, and and you get that sense of kind of nervousness, and we get little previews of what's to come, and the previews of what's to come are uh, bad. Bad. <laughs> okay. Harry, Megan, Eugenie, Eugenie, Eugenie. I think it's Eugenie. Okay. And Jack went out it for dinner. It sounds better to me, Eugenie, even if it's not. Okay. But I think it's Eugenie. Uh, they all went out for dinner. They look nice and, like, normal. Yes. And they just got, like, papped going out to dinner. Yes. And it's fine. But, of course, uh, well, I mean, they're not happy because they want Harry to be isolated from his entire family. Yeah. Um, and so any, even his cousin, uh, you know, them showing any signs of closeness uh, is... Or, God forbid, having fun together. Or, God forbid, smiling at dinner together uh, is not what the UK press want to see. Um, but, of course, TMZ held the photos until the first day of Kate Middleton's Danish adventure. <laughs> um, so, accusations of overshadowing. Because, apparently, grainy photos uh, of you going out to dinner can overshadow a royal tour. Well, yeah, and now maybe... I didn't realize this until I read this somewhere in the coverage of this yes. or something but tmc is now owned by rupert murdoch so really? yes oh. so that could have been by design oh no I mean, i'm saying it they, is by design but i mean they held it on purpose so that they so that people could then scream yes. your overshadow yes that is what i'm saying but i mean yeah tmz is owned by murdoch now oh so. shit my favorite was where somebody was critical of Kate or William or somebody and someone threw back with, oh, yeah, well, Harry and Meghan, they really want their privacy with these, pic you know, like somehow that like oh, they yes. had put these pictures out and this proved they didn't care about their privacy. It's like they were at a public restaurant. They you can see them through a window. But mom, they I sat by the window. They, they, they don't, don't have an expectation of <laughs> privacy per se yeah. in sitting at a public restaurant by a window. Yes, and they got papped. Yeah, I mean it's like it's it, ridiculous. It's it's fair. Any time they show their faces, every single UK Rhoda says yeah. this is proof that yeah. we were right, yeah. they were wrong. Because They're just a, a tendency. Apparently, seeking. unless they sit in their house and never ever go in public. Yes, they're. Privacy concerns are invalid. Yes. Yeah. Makes you sense. got it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's ridiculous. So someone pointed out, well, before we even talk about that, this fits a pattern of even when they were in the royal family, you know, there's a bunch of family members who will do engagements on the same day, whatever. Even them posting something on Instagram close to like someone else's birthday, they were accused of overshadowing. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, of course, uh, someone pointed out, you know, if grainy day old photos overshadows your tour, then that's on you. Yeah. Um, and of course, like any Cambridge, said it right, tour, Denmark started out poorly, um, first with accusations from Danish media that the Brits threatened them not to ask any questions about Andrew. Um, then Kate was late. Already short engagements were limited in time, uh, which is a common thing to happen to them. Um, so, <laughs> woohoo. Uh, it was highlighted by very glossy photos uh, from the Brits. Uh, I This will be in the video, yeah. but just some evidence of what uh, certain photos... I mean, and everyone has angles, and there's good lighting, and there's bad lighting. Uh, 
But for a while, uh, back in my Tumblr, early Tumblr days, you couldn't find an unedited photo of Kate yeah. anywhere. So just to, just to throw that out there. Yeah. Um, I would ask again uh, what she learned about early childhood that couldn't be learned from a Google search. <laughs> I'm not entirely yeah. clear on that. Yeah. Um, and again, not touching anything even in the realm of, like the realm of politics. I mean, the best thing we can do for early childhood development is to do our best to ensure children don't grow up in poverty. It's not about yeah. Legos or slides right. or chopping wood right. or going outside. It's right. ensuring all children. All those things are good. All those things but, are good. But, uh, but maybe, the basics. Maybe they should have shelter and food and, yes. you know, some minor living standard before we worry about but that's you know. deemed in the UK, and I mean, I would argue here too, that's deemed political, so she yeah. won't touch it. Yeah. But it's it's very frustrating to see people say that, you know, she is leading the way on early childhood development when she can't touch the the the, the major tent poles of it, yeah. which is hungry kids don't learn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean... She's making appearances at places where there are children. I think that's different than leading the, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, and maybe she doesn't have to lead the way, but I mean, I, leading the way is not just showing up somewhere where there are kids. And taking photos with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. While you look happy. And uh, these, for some reason, these pictures, and maybe because there was one where she had like a button down coat. Yeah. Uh, the whole eating disorder thing is really. Uh, I know, I mean, and it's, it's so thin. I mean, yeah, I couldn't wear any sort of coat, and I mean, I have the opposite problem in photos. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's it. Uh, I don't know. At, at one point, it was really striking to me that she just. It's very. It's thin. like if this is how thin you look in a coat in photos. In photos, yeah. I just can't even. I can't even, and I I don't know. I think there's, you know, clearly if there's an eating disorder, there's other issues. And Well, we have to be careful in what we say. We don't know, know that she has an eating no, disorder. And this is coming from a place of concern yeah. of like. Yeah, no, it's like. You look at photos and you're like, oh gosh. You're yeah, this, is, this is not like commenting on her appearance for commenting on her appearance yeah. or saying, you know, uh, uh, I, I worry that it's a history sign of repeating underlying itself. yeah issues yes. and history repeating itself. Well, we I've talked about before on Twitter, and I'm not sure in videos. It's just like there's another woman who's married to a Windsor heir, who a lot of times looks very nervous in public, and who is very very thin. Yeah, and it seems like certain members of the press want to almost congratulate her for that. They kind of reward her for being this exceptionally thin white woman um, who upholds the statutes of motherhood well. Um, but I would hope that in 2022, um, there would also be a segment of us who looks at this and goes, oh, something is wrong. Yeah. Something's very wrong. I mean, that's, I, I don't know. It, it just seems... When you look at that, because yeah. the camera adds 20 pounds. I mean, yeah. the and the, plus a coat. 10. Oh, even more. I, I tell this story all the time. I was on TRL once <laughs> um, when I was 16. Oh, I wasn't even oh, 16. We lied. My mom lied to the police. I did not lie to the police. <laughs> I lied to MTV. Okay. I don't think it's the um, same thing. I was on TRL uh, in the audience. I was on camera for a brief second, but the... Um, the, the people on TRL were uh, Steve Carell, who was very nice, and Fergie. The not... The singer. Not the singer Fergie. The black not, singer yes. Fergie. Not and Fergie the whole Fergie. thing about TRL is you can sit in the audience and kind of look to the side and see the broadcast on the building next to us. They have like a screen outside. And Fergie, uh, who is also very nice, um, but... S also I, super thin. No, that's what I'm getting oh, to. Oh, sorry. Um... Literally, I have tiny hands, guys, and sh she was so, so thin. I can't even, like, you look at her and you, in person and you're just like, oh, my God. Uh, like, so skinny. But then you look to your right, and she looked curvy, practically, on screen. I mean, it, add, yeah. it, it did not add 10 pounds, Mom. It added, that. those cameras added 
a whole bunch of weight. Yeah. I mean, people who look normally thin on TV look... Emaciated in person. In person. So if you look... Yeah. That's no, my TRL no, story. same thing. Right. Maybe even same trip. I wandered down to Rockefeller Center and saw part of the Today Show outside. And one of their... One of the women who was on the Today Show walked outside. And I was... I literally could have put my two hands yes. around her waist. Yes. She was so tiny. And... Um, so, I mean, if, if, if the people who look kind of normally thin on TV look how they look in real life, I just can't even imagine. How skinny she is in real yeah. life. Yeah. 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 Well, they did their first tour in Canada or, or in Canada in the U.S. and she was standing next to Nicole Kidman. And back then that was before she was sainted. So the press would talk about her and somewhat, I, I mean, they sainted Kate, not Nicole Kidman, yeah. but... I still remember this because I was mad about it back then. And someone said, if you're standing next to Nicole Kidman and you look smaller, there is a problem. Oh, yeah. um, and so, again, this comes from a place of concern. Uh, and it's a, a kind of sad that she doesn't really seem to have anyone in her corner um, that is, again, showing concern that another Windsor wife is, again, uh, appears anxious a lot in public and is very, very, very thin. Yeah. Yeah, it's, That's all I have it's to say. scary. It's scary. Okay, but to completely flip coins, I'm going to read this out loud again <laughs> because it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Um, so apparently after posting photo after photo, edited photo of her, you know, pumping her up as the world's best thing to happen to children, the Daily Mail felt like it, it, they hadn't done enough. Okay. They hadn't done enough to prop. And I, and I don't know if they were told by the palace to do this. I don't know if they just did this out of the goodness of their hearts. I don't know if this is a joke, <laughs> but here we go. I doubt it's a joke. Well. I feel like the person who wrote this had to be maybe, laughing, right? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. No one holds the Duchess of Cambridge in greater esteem than the male. <laughs> While visiting Denmark, she showed exactly why. She enthusiastically chopped logs and took a woodland ramble with kindergarten pupils at, as part of her crusade to give children a better start in life. Always smiling, never stuffy, relishing duty. Kate is the perfect ambassador, a powerful force for good, and a credit to the country. Woo! Like, who that did... is some major <laughs> brown nose in there. Like, oh! That is... Uh, mm. <sighs> mm. And, and again, it just it feels wrong to me to again prop someone up who is going through the motions but isn't actually doing anything. Yeah. None of this helps. Well, I mean, given that it's the mail and given the lawsuits and stuff, don't you think this was probably just intended to, like, get in Megan's face? And don't you think that Megan probably read this and laughed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think this would backfire because this, I mean, if that's what they were trying to do, it's just silly. I keep saying that, but it is. Uh <laughs> I, I literally read this and, and um, this Megan started laughing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hope that I don't think Megan Markle reads any of the shit. No, um, but, if, but, but I mean, if it's intended to kind of somehow like rile, like rile her up, I yeah. don't think it would have that. Um, I don't think it would have no, that. But I also just think it, it is again, and I keep going back to this and I know that, but it, it just is so crazy to me that, at this time, we're doing this shit. Well, plus, if someone really is the perfect ambassador and a powerful force for good, et cetera, et cetera, do they really need the Daily Mail to, like, say that? I mean, it, no. seems, like, it, seems, <laughs> no. like, it seems like if any of that was true, you wouldn't need people to run around publishing it on your behalf. It would just be apparent to everyone. Yeah, but it's not. So we get this shit. Yeah. Which, again, enthusiastically chopping logs does not help children. No. Feeding children helps children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and this all has the, the, the um, Jeb Bush, please clap <laughs> yes. quality to it. Like, just kind of pathetically asking for acknowledgement and enthusiasm about something that maybe people aren't so enthusiastic about. I mean, that's just, they could have. Yes. Just as easily said, please clap. And it would, it sort of has the same. Yes. Well, and it just, again, it shows they, they didn't want another Diana at, for, for their own reasons. But 
Diana did some things that actually really did affect change in big ways. Um, and that's why I think people connected with her. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it was the touching of AIDS patients, what yeah. she's done with landmines. Um, she wasn't a f- as, as afraid to say, like, to say, like, we need to feed kids. But that's the... It's the whole thing that it always comes back to of sincerity versus insincerity. And you can't, you can't force genuineness because that by its definition isn't genuine. Yes. So, so we get this. So we get this. I mean, yeah. you know, if someone's genuinely concerned and caring, a la Diana, it shows. Yes. And you don't have to talk about it because you can see it. And she sincerely was interested in those things and sought them out. And, you know, yes. and I mean, not that, I mean, Kate's probably interested in children and has, you know, but I don't think she's, uh, I, I just don't think she's quite figured out what she, uh, I don't think it's a cause the same way. You know, I mean, I just, I, I think it's unfortunate. It's a checkbox. It's, yeah, it's, it's checkbox. too bad she can't find a cause she's sincerely interested in and yeah. do something with that. Um, okay. Prince Harry has filed a defamation suit against a and for saying he lied about requesting to privately pay for his security. This is the same publishing group Meghan Markle just won a, a big lawsuit against. And Prince Harry actually already settled with them back in January 2021 of lying. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just never ends. Um, but I hope he, I mean, if, if he's suing, his, so far their legal team has been good. If he's suing, there's proof. Yeah. So... Hope yeah. he wins. Yeah. Go, Harry. Go, Harry. Take all their money. <laughs> um, then William Lee. So the day before Putin invaded Ukraine, uh, William leaked that he went on a private visit to MI6, which is the UK equivalent of like the CIA, I guess, kind of. I, guess, I don't think there's uh, MI5 and MI6, and I don't know. I have no clue. Is. I don't care. We're sorry. Anyway, we're, we're, we're sorry. not We're not that sorry. Um, we're a little sorry. It's It's... Good to be an informed citizen of the oh world. Oh, my gosh. Okay. A, a British intelligence service. Yeah. Don't you think that was... That, and that was just meant to make him look, like... Yes. Studly. It... <laughs> Manly. <laughs> I mean, seriously. What's he... I mean, you really think they... I mean... Yeah, Mom. He can do... He's a statesman. You think he was giving them advice? They were asking... He probably him. was, well, but... Do you think they asked for it? No. <laughs> um, but, okay. It, it presents a, a problem as... as my British friends on Twitter have pointed out and that he is not the monarch or the heir and they have made all these promises that only the monarch gets these like security briefings uh, so what the hell was he doing there other than trying to fluff his own image yeah I, I don't know isn't he on that list though of counselors that can uh, be instead of the queen if she's well, maybe. ailing seems like maybe this is one of those times I don't know. It just seems like I, such a fluffy thing to do. Well, but I, and I think it was all to pump himself up. Yeah. Not, you know, I mean, <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I had sort of recently seen the like side by side video. Maybe it's not new or anything, but of, you know, Harry like doing all the obstacle courses and William oh, having to be oh, helped through the rope course. Or whatever William's bringing up this video. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's the funniest. But thing. it is the funniest thing. Maybe he saw it too and decided. Oh, he's he wanted, definitely. But I mean, but I mean, maybe I. I don't know. It just seems oh. to me like, I mean, person who has nothing to do with this anything, uh, this intelligence agency going to visit and then talking about it. Seems to me that someone wants to pump up their sort of macho cred, you know. I don't know. Very macho. It's weird. But it's he weird. could, I thought he was on that counselor list. So, I mean, arguably. No, but I feel like what the people on Twitter were talking about is they've made promises in the past that, like, that, because they're not supposed to, they're figureheads, right? Like, they can't make any, that that only, like, the monarch right, gets certain what things. If, but what if the queen, what yeah. if the day before, we all know there's going to be an invasion of a European country. Yeah. So send the Charles. monarch would have got, well, but maybe he was, I don't know, maybe he was busy. It doesn't well, sound <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was busy. I don't know. <laughs> well, if it's that important. Then maybe he should go. Well, but they are figureheads. If it is just a heads up kind of thing, <laughs> it's not like they have anything to do with it. Okay. If it's just a, he- I'm just saying. It may okay. Not be all right. Like, all right. He's not okay. allowed because I think he's on the list. Right. Uh, Charles was busy. Where was he? Wasn't I don't know. he somewhere? Did he go somewhere or something? I don't, I don't know. know. Who cares? Or maybe he had COVID still. 
Well, he already spread it to his elderly <laughs> mother. Well, Why maybe not he doesn't want it. Maybe he doesn't want to spread it to you know their intelligence people agencies. who are really working. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, on the same day, uh, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. Um, Will and Kate announced that they're going to the Caribbean. Woo! Uh, Before any statement was made about uh, yeah. the whole Ukrainian thing. Uh, yeah. We decided I, we got Jubilee. Death is their middle name. We've already figured it out. Um, and then basically, <laughs> pretty immediately, Jamaica released that they uh, don't really want them there. Uh, they <laughs> do not want to pay for it. They're not going to pay for it. Um, specifically saying that they would pay for other dignitaries, but not a royal visit. <laughs> um, and again, just to drive home this point, royal tours cost the home country money. Yeah. In some cases, a lot. A less than three-day tour to Ireland by William and Kate cost the Irish taxpayer $1.8 million. Yeah. Is it dollars? Or yes, is it, dollars. Oh. It was like 1.3 okay. million pounds, but I, yeah. I, I, we're talking, we're Americans. Oh. Yeah. Well, I just um, want to make sure you've done the conversion, <laughs> cause I've done the math, because dollars end up being more than pounds. Yeah, $1.8 million. Yeah. For a three-day, less than three-day yeah. tour. Yeah. Insanity. And, I mean, I think not only is the announcement when they announced it tone deaf but i mean the tour itself i mean because look inflation's been rampant everywhere yes um the invasion of of russia by putin of ukraine i'm <coughs> sorry by putin and war is going to make things significantly worse yes. especially in europe and to go flitting about on an unnecessary expensive trip that you're not even paying for. Right. Or, I mean, you're seems, not even paying for all of it. Seems even more... T- I mean, the whole thing is just tone deaf on tone deaf on tone deaf. Yes. Well, and it shows kind of how insular they are. That A, no one could read the room and pull this announcement back. Because it wasn't just Will and Kate. They announced all the Jubilee tours. Yeah. But it's like, how was there no one in the room who was watching the news going, yeah, today's not the day. Yeah. Not the day to announce this shit. But also kind of the concept that people want this because it's about the Queen's Jubilee, Mom, and everyone cares yeah. about the Queen's yeah. Jubilee. No one, There's nothing else going on. We're all just happy as clams. I think they think being non-political, or at least in a way, means they get to live in this little bubble and they can do everything in their little bubble and they can just ignore what's going on in the world yeah. and go on their merry way. And, you know, maybe in times when there aren't big geopolitical events and war yeah. and you know nuclear threats in the out there in the world maybe that works but mm-hmm. it clearly doesn't work in the state of the world mm-hmm. in February of 2022 and you know I mean I I honestly think that they they just don't even uh, I don't know they seem so insulated including the people that work for them that they just seem to be tuned out completely to what's going on in the rest of the world which is it's yeah. kind of pathetic. Well, and especially because they're not going to save these countries. The reason they're going to all these Commonwealth countries is they're terrified that they're going to leave after the Queen passes. Yeah. And I mean, Jamaica's putting up a real front now. I mean, yeah. Jamaica might leave before the Queen passes. I think it depends on timing. Um, but it's just so interesting to me. Again, yes, they live. They think by saying they're non-political, they don't have to deal with the real world. Yeah. And it was just... Imagine a or world, or even acknowledge, or the even real acknowledge world the by world. like not putting out an announcement like this yeah. on a day where you know yeah. we go to war in the world. Well, and especially because even though they left the European Union, they're obviously much closer. I mean, an invasion yeah. of Ukraine means something very different to someone sitting in London yeah. than it does for us sitting in Washington yeah. State. And it's bad enough here. And it's bad I mean, enough here. And so everyone's scared. Um, I would imagine, you know, people have already talked about, you know, 1939 and that, you know, this is another very aggressive man using military might to invade peaceful countries, um, that this is how other things have started. Yeah. Um, one specific thing. Yeah. Um, can you imagine if instead they had they had put out something that said, hey, um, you know, obviously we stand with the people of Ukraine. This is horrible. Instead of spending tens of millions of dollars on all these tours, uh, we want the government to direct it into like 
helping help Ukrainians or helping right to like you, right to help Ukrainians, help displaced Ukrainians, yes. uh, take in some refugees, yes, or or perhaps you know help bolster up the NATO countries that are on Ukraine's border. Yes, we're giving this uh, to Poland so they can even accept. if it's even if it's not. I mean, obviously, maybe not in a military sense, but you know. Uh, start a fund for humanitarian aid in the bordering NATO yes. countries that are going to take in refugees and that are faced with, you know, very imminent um, military threat. And uh, there's a bazillion things that you that could, money could yes. be better spent on than which would give them a PR. On a, I mean, on a you know uh, island vacation, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, the know. royal family should hire us uh, because yeah. we could fix this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but could you imagine in that in that type of world where they were like, I mean, it it just is is crazy to me that, I, and it shouldn't be because they repeatedly show how tone deaf they yeah. are. But it's just like well, and they'll never do it. I mean, you don't need to hire us, although we're here. We're here. Uh, just we take hire money. Non sycophants. Yeah. You know, I mean, and they but, won't then listen because to them. that's how it. Because that's how it. You know, you need to be in this little bubble and loop yes. of you're so wonderful yes. and go to the Caribbean yeah, on your vacation yeah. and I mean while it's people working, are dying it's working it's a it's a job you know yeah and and um you know I mean I, I think the kind of people they need around them to give them better advice I don't think they'll ever hire and if they did they probably wouldn't listen to them so yeah Anyway, it's frivolous, it's stupid, and they definitely should have put out a statement. At, at the very least, yeah. they should have put out a statement. Uh, again, it can be non-political. I mean, p innocent people are dying. It's not political to say that that's a bad thing. No, as much as families people, basically yes. living in subway stations. There's, yes. I mean, that there's it is children. not political. If you want to be about children, be about the children of Ukraine. Yes. I mean, come on, it's not it's, hard. It's people. not political to release a statement that children dying is a bad thing. Yeah, it's not hard. Yeah. You can workshop that a little bit. Um, at the very least, they should have put out a statement first and then announced tours. Right. Well, and it's also not political to just in general say, you know war is a bad thing and yes. we don't wish it on the world and we you know hope that there's peace whatever <laughs> there's something they could have said yes. that is better than we're going off on vacation on vacation basically paid vacation yay everyone cheer for us yes okay last but not least the NAACP announced they are awarding Harry and Meghan uh, with the President's Award I I've never watched this award show so I don't know um, but uh, and that Archwell and the NAACP are presenting a shared award. Um, and Harry and Meghan did put out a We Stand with the People yes. of Ukraine <laughs> statement. Um, so, of course, the ladies are mad. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I just, I, on the same day, a majority black Commonwealth country is like, do not come here. We do not want you. We're not paying for yeah. you. Uh, this announcement is hilarious to me. It is sort of hilarious. It's I mean, great. They really should, instead of just always accusing Harry and Meghan of trying to upstage, they should really be taking a cue or two, but they'll never do that, obviously. No, so. well, and I forgot to mention this, Jamaica, a, a major Jamaican newspaper today has said they would have preferred a visit from Harry and Meghan. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I'm sorry. It and is they funny. were so, I said in my video yesterday, the royal family and their little syncophantic press were so assured that Harry and Meghan would fail. And a lot of that was based on their own prejudice. Yeah. And the fact that they have come to the United States. Um, thrived. Thrived, uh, despite whatever BS is going on across the pond. And it's just, it's funny to me. Yeah. We should laugh in their face. Yeah. You know, we get this, whatever the heck that Kate statement <laughs> was. It's just, you know, and between Charles, Andrew, the Diana's fact that ex -husband. D Diana's ex-husband, who's um, William and Kate are, are, are not that great. Uh, like, it just seems the royal family is, is again, looking at a, a crisis and Harry and Meghan could have helped them with that. And they pushed them out on racial lines. And the I, this, this, this announcement just makes me cackle. It's just funny. Yeah. Well... There's so many things they could have solved by embracing Harry and Meghan and and kind of um, 
having a more expansive, you know, uh, working royal family that like did real life things. Yes. And, and instead, Harry and Meghan left, and now, and you know, Andrew's booted out. Uh, not that he was any great chase to start with, but no. you know. Um, and instead, so instead, they have this little insular circle of what appear to be like clueless white people <laughs> that that are trying to navigate in a world that has changed, passed them by. Yes. And it just doesn't work very well. And I think, you know, I mean, I think some of the hope for the monarchy after the queen, and I mean, maybe even looking to leapfrog over Charles, but certainly after the queen, was that, you know, there'd be modernization of the monarchy and the British royal family. And that just... I mean, they almost seem to be going backwards instead of forwards. Yes. And that, uh, I don't think that bodes well long term, but what do I know? <laughs> well, I've always said that they seem to be chasing, kind of like Republicans here, a an increasingly right-wing conservative base yeah. that is shrinking, but is also getting more and more... Um, because I would argue, you know, I started watching Will and Kate, and that seems creepy, but it kind of is, um, right after their wedding. And I I really don't think they were like this in 2011 mm -hmm. and 2012. And that in order to kind of chase people who like them, they have become increasingly conservative. Um, and kind of what you were going on about, about how they would never hire uh, actual good people because they wouldn't listen to them. I think Megan found out that same problem too in like... Uh, you know, because I could see her being the voice of like, what do you mean we're announcing a tour? Right. What? Yeah. You know, like, don't do that. <laughs> you know, or... Um, and instead of Megan makes sense, yes. they would be like, oh, she's horrible. Yes. She, she, she sent that email at four her, in the morning. She's terrible <laughs> to her staff. She won't listen to their yes. shitty ideas. Yes. You yes. Know. I think they run into that same problem. Yeah. All right. Well, um, you know... Uh, do you want to make a comment about what's going on in the world about how Vladimir Putin sucks ass? Well, I hope people realize that. Stand with Ukraine. Yeah. Um, <sighs> hope for better hope. days. Yes. All right. See so you got Well, okay, that was really a downer. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> there's, it's not like a happy day. Okay. Or a happy week. It's it's awful. Yeah. It's like truly awful. And... and um, I don't know. It's, uh, as many people have said, living in, living history is, you know, not <laughs> I'm nearly, over it. nearly I'm as over fun it. as one would like to imagine. <sighs> but, you know, we live in, in scary and um, trying times. And let's okay. just try to get through and not be jerks to each other. And not all of us get to go to Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.